One Zambia, one nation, hello and welcome to the news. I am your presenter, Henry Himonde. A look at the top stories. President Hijinema expected in Italy and Germany. Mufurida Council disperses over 7 million kwacha CDF loans. Zesco to connect Lundazi and Chama to the national grid. And farmers urged to vaccinate their animals. The news in detail, President Hagainde Hijilema is expected in Germany to attend the fifth conference on the G20 compact with Africa, which is scheduled to take place on Monday, November 20th, 2023. President Hijilema's visit is at the invitation of the German Chancellor Olaf Schuss, while in Germany the president is expected to participate in discussions centered on the energy sector in relation to trade and investment opportunities in African emerging markets and strengthened economic cooperation and promotion of private sector investment. Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation Stanley Kakubo says President Hijilema will also hold bilateral talks with other leaders on matters of mutual interest on the sidelines of the conference. Mr. Kakuo said President Hijilema will immediately after the conference undertake a state visit to Italy on 21st November 2023 aimed at reinforcing strategic bilateral and economic relations between Zambia and Italy. He disclosed that the president is expected in Italy from 21st to 22nd November 2023 following an invitation by Sergio Mattarella, president of Italy. Mr. Kakubo added that President Hijilema is scheduled to hold talks in Rome with President Mattarella and Prime Minister of Italy, Giorgia Maloni, on pertinent issues that at bilateral and multilateral levels, among other important engagements. Mr. Kakubo said this in a statement availed to Zanis adding that the president is expected to return to Zambia immediately after his engagements. Now, fire has swept through Kamwala Secondary School in Lusaka, destroying the head teacher's office, library, and school bus. The fire, which is believed to have started in the early hours of today, has also destroyed the control room for the communication tower, which is within the school premises. By press time, the cause of the fire had not yet been established, as investigations have been instituted by the police. And speaking to journalists after inspecting the extent of the damage caused by the fire, Minister of Education Permanent Secretary for Administration, Nariana Muneku, described the fire incident as unfortunate. Mrs. Muneku said the fire incident is a huge drawback on the part of government as it was in the process of starting to work on the school hall, which was gutted by fire in June this year. She said the cause of the fire will only be known once investigations are concluded. What has happened is beyond what we can think of. I, I won't rely on hearsay because it will be very difficult. We do not know whether it's connected to our school children, particularly that exams, some of them concluded the exams yesterday. And, uh, but what I'm wondering is where this delicacy is coming from whether it's their upbringing, if it's our children. I don't want to point fingers right now because I think it will be unfair. We need to see where this is coming from. But look, as a PS, I can also not rule out that it will be the words of our children. Whether it's excitement that they are closing, but it's terrible excitement. Meanwhile, Kembe, member of parliament, Princess Kasune, has handed over classroom blocks at Atu Nyadane and Muntemba schools in Chibombo district built using the constituency development fund CDF at a cost of over 1 million kwacha. Shupeki Lenkunika now reports. It started as a community school in 1913 with no structure. In 1935, Muntemba primary school in Kembe constituency Chibombo district was adopted by the colonial government. 
a one by three classroom block was built. 30 years later, another one by three classroom block was constructed. Since then, the school has had no other infrastructure. It has taken 58 years for the government to build another one by three classroom block, thankfully, from the Constituency Development Fund. Here you have a one by three classroom with 675,000 kwacha plus, plus 30 desks, which are costing about 1,401. Guard it jealously. The school manager has commended government for expanding classroom space. Good communication, government was communicated to and has rightly and timely responded, making this long-awaited dream of the community a reality. Chibombo Town Council has stressed its commitment to ensuring that the Constituency Development Fund benefits the grassroots. We are very happy as the local authorities that the money has been entrusted with the local authorities. Pupils at the school are excited. We were 101 in class. We used to sit on the floor, but we are so thankful for the buildings, the classes that the government has brought forth to us. We mostly had leakages during class times, and it wasn't that interesting to learn. We mostly find it hard. Klupekile and Konika Fozanis in Chibombo District, Central Province. Minister of Transport and Logistics, Frank Tayali, has handed over 1,000 desks and given loans to Ndola Central Constituency worth 3.2 million kwacha. Mr. Tayali, who is also Ndola Central Member of Parliament, expressed happiness that the CDF is helping to improve the learning environment for children in schools and contributing to the alleviation of poverty through income-generating activities. Residents of Ndola Central Constituents on the Copper Belt Province have thanked government for empowering them with loans to boost their businesses using the Constituents Development Funds. At this time to give uh, thanks for the loans that you have uh, given us as the loan applicants. We are so grateful. These loans will not only help us as uh, members of organizations but also in developing the constituencies. Indora Central Member of Parliament, Frank Tayali, handed over the loans to the beneficiaries in Hillcrest area. Mr. Tayali, who is also Minister of Transport and Logistics, handed over 1,000 desks to Perseverance Primary School, where learners had a shortage of these desks. We shall also proceed because we have procured a total of 1,000 desks which will be able to benefit other schools as well. This is extremely important in order for us to improve our learning environment. The new Don government under His Excellency President Akainde Chema, who himself came from a very humble background, has made it his priority that not only shall we make education free of charge in the sense that the government picks up the tab of paying for the school, but that we shall improve the learning environment. Ndola City Mayor John Scariati urged the beneficiaries to use the funds for the intended purpose of boosting their businesses. A message of warning, and I do not regret because I mean well and I know the president means well. I also know that you mean well when you give money. No, 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 no. You mean to empower people when you are given a one quarter. Perseverance Primary School head teacher thanked government for coming to their aid. This kind of donation of this has actually uplifted our spirits as teachers. Gone are the days when men are used to run for desk in the morning before they commence their lessons. But this time around, because of the big picture which our president has to ensure that uh, the primary education millennium goals are achieved through such donations, we are alive to the fact that now the story of rushing for death, pupils fighting for death will be a story of the past. Constituents Development Funds in Indola Central has been used to empower the community members 
and also to improve the learning environment for these learners. Tovini Ngombe, Zdanis, Indola. We now take our first break and more stories when we come back. Stay tuned. The Common Market for Eastern and Southern Africa, Comesa, will hold the 44th Policy Organ Meetings at Mulungushi International Conference Center, Lusaka. They include the 44th Comesa Intergovernmental Committee and the 44th Council of Ministers Meeting. The meetings will take place from the 21st to the 23rd of November 2023. The theme for this year is Economic Integration for a Thriving Comesa, anchored on green investment, value addition and tourism. Over 400 delegates from the 21 Comesa member states are expected to attend the Comesa Policy Organ Meeting in Lusaka. This advert is brought to you by the Common Market for Eastern and Southern Africa, Comesa. For news and current affairs, entertainment, sports, children's programs, and a host of other events in and beyond our borders, Sunny's TV has you covered. On Channel 6 and Channel 458 on Topstar. The news continues. Mufrira District is poised for transformative economic growth following an injection of over 7 million kwacha into the business community through the Constituency Development Fund CDF loans. Speaking during the disbasement of the funds to three constituencies, Mufrira District Commissioner Saboy Kawika says the funds will help boost the local businesses. Rachel Chisulo covered the disbasement and now reports. In a significant boost to Mufulira District's business landscape, a total of 7,240,830 kwacha has been injected into the community through Constituency Development Fund CDF loans. Kankoyo Constituency received a share of 2,834,226 kwacha, while Mufulira Central secured 2,938,000 195 kwacha and Kantanshi benefited with 1,468,409 kwacha. The impact of these empowerment loans extends beyond mere financial benefits. They also foster a culture of entrepreneurship, innovation and personal growth. By investing in our people, we invest in a long-term success of our community. Mufulira Mayor Tanaeli Kamanga emphasized the transformative potential of these funds, encouraging the 69 recipient groups to leverage them as a stepping stone towards wealth creation. Don't be scared. Don't fear to use it. Let this money bring a profit so that Mufulira will be able to be a place of abundance. The recipients, expressing their commitment, vowed to use the allocated funds judiciously and responsibly. We shall see to it that we shall grow our businesses and be able to also roll out to other people that are also in the need. This injection of funds into the business community is poised to act as a catalyst propelling the growth of Mufulira's economy. Rachel Chisulo, reporting for Zanis in Mufulira. Mwembeshi, Member of Parliament, Jamba Majila, says government remains committed to bringing education and healthcare services closer to the people. Mr. Majila said this during the groundbreaking ceremony for the construction of a clinic in Kapianga West and a dormitory at Mukulaikwa Secondary School in Shibuinji District using the Constituency Development Fund. Tina Kawamba has more in this report. Mwembeshi Member of Parliament Jamba Machila has flagged off the construction of a clinic in Kapyango West and a dormitory in Mukulaikwa under the 2022-2023 Constituency Development Fund in Shibunji District of Central Province. Speaking during the groundbreaking ceremony of the two projects, Mr. Machila said the new Don government is in a hurry to deliver development to rural areas. This project is costing us 1.4 million kwacha. It is under CDF, the component of projects. Now what happened was that we had allocated money in 2022 budget for this project. But that money wasn't enough because what we are told is that this clinic is not just an ordinary clinic like the one we built at Mutombe. This one comes with an ambulance bay. 
It comes with the mother's maternity wing. He added that the construction of the clinic and dormitory will help curb the infrastructure deficit in the district. This clinic is very important to the people of Rotondo. The pregnant mothers who cannot walk 5 to 10 kilometers when they are pregnant during delivery. We are saying we are bringing this service nearer to the people here. Traditional and civic leaders who were present at the ceremony were happy. They commended the New Dawn government for its commitment to developing rural areas through the Constituency Development Fund. So to Arumba, you go to Jayagua, but I go to Yajiranganda, Manda, go on a move and a Bajiko. I got a Jaringa Jivi, Kubana, good ending, a Makamakaba and a Bashim. Jaringa Jivi, Kubana, Bashim, Javanga, Baruba, go in Nanda, but I go under Gumuma, Mamuana. Rotondo. As we can see, a lot of people have been suffering, moving from here, going to Kapianga, Kapianga Clinic. It was not something easy, but looking at the situation right now, uh, all the people around are very happy. Meanwhile, residents of the two areas also expressed gratitude to government. They said the clinic and dormitory will be a great asset to their communities. I'm very happy for what the government is, is doing here. Uh, government clinic. Clinic cool. The construction of the clinic and dormitory is expected to be completed within three months. Tina Kabamba reporting for Zanis in Shibunji District, Central Province. Mukosai Mauti Peoples Cooperative in Material Constituency Chairperson says the 30,000 kwacha that the group received under the Constituency Development Fund is impacting positively on their lives. Lakson Makoza now gives us details of the group's chicken business. Prudent utilization of the Constituency Development Fund, CDF, by cooperative has begun yielding positive results. An example is Mwakosai, Mount Purpose Group in Material Constituency, who have ventured in chicken rearing. The venture has helped members of the group to fend for their families. President Tivaonga, Ziko, Monchita, Meva Seven, Zakuli, Savazmai, if was my Eva Satrekere, but Pitrize, Namtima was so charged. Una cooperative, Ika Bustina, I kind of Paso Golo, Chametifuna, Vazmite Tandizani. The success story has elated Lusaka City Council District Planning Officer Roland Ngala who visited the project. Mr. Ngala has since employed women and youths to take advantage of the extension period of applying for empowerment funds under CDF. We have now seen what, what it can do. So for those uh, youths that are still doubting wherever they are in the district, I will take this opportunity also to tell them to come forth and form cooperatives. Because now we've even extended the date for, for application. It has been extended to 5th of December. The impact of CDF empowerment funds will only be felt if beneficiaries put the funds to good use. For Zanis, I'm Lakson Makodza. Gender Division Permanent Secretary Mainga Kawika has called on women in Rwangwa district to take advantage of government empowerment programs in order to uplift their lives. Ms. Mainga was speaking during an entrepreneurship skills training for women, cooperatives and clubs in Rwangwa district. Lista Ndumba has more in this report. Women cooperatives and club members in Ilwangwa district have been empowered with knowledge on entrepreneurship at a training organized by Gender Division, a unit under the Office of the President. Gracing the occasion, Gender Division Permanent Secretary Mainga Kavika urged the participants to apply the skills and knowledge they have acquired to contribute to their household needs and help reduce gender-based violence in their homes. Uh, 
Why? Because bank can have time to quite talk to you. My issues are all many and many, but it's bank I end because I worried put in as a million rent in that. As I could have one of the other than that. That's why to find the person for knowledge. Luangwa District Commissioner Lukchkan is happy with the development. Robert Musenga Nweo, Matru Ma Cooperatives and Naya, Mukoika Kunze, eh? A PSE is so good with that. Bomayas will do soon. Representing the participants, Frida Chiluva thanked government for the knowledge and skills impacted in her and other participants in the district. Ms. Chiluva added that the knowledge will help them to successfully manage their businesses, which will in turn uplift their livelihood. <laughs> Gender division unit under the office of the president has embarked on capacity building trainings in entrepreneurship skills for selected women clubs and cooperatives that are on gender division unit empowerment programs. Lista Ndumba reporting Luangwa district. We take our second break, but still ahead in the news, Zesco to connect Lundazi and Chama districts to the national electricity grid. The Common Market for Eastern and Southern Africa, Comesa, will hold the 44th Policy Organ Meetings at Mulungushi International Conference Center, Lusaka. They include the 44th Comesa Intergovernmental Committee and the 44th Council of Ministers Meeting. The meetings will take place from the 21st to the 23rd of November, 2023. The theme for this year is Economic Integration for a Thriving Comesa, anchored on green investment, value addition, and tourism. Over 400 delegates from the 21 Comesa member states are expected to attend the Comesa Policy Organ Meeting in Lusaka. This advert is brought to you by the Common Market for Eastern and Southern Africa, Comesa. For news and current affairs, entertainment, sports, children's programs, and a host of other events in and beyond our borders, Sunny's TV has you covered on Channel 6 and Channel 458 on Topstar. We continue with the news. Lundazi and Chama districts in Eastern Province are earmarked to be connected to the national electricity grid by the end of this year, after years of using imported electricity from ne neighboring Malawi. Zambia Electricity Supply Corporation Limited Managing Director Victor Mapani, who inspected works on substations linked to the 132 kilo volt line from Chipata to Chama, says commission tests will commence early next month. Here are the details. Zambia Electricity Supply Corporation Limited, Zesco's Chipata West substation, is one of the four substations that complete the project aimed at connecting Lundazi and Chama districts to the national grid. Zesco Managing Director Victor Mapani was in Eastern Province to inspect works on the project that is now set to be commissioned by the end of this year. This project now has seen a horizon. They are telling me that they will be done by the second week of December um, and then start doing the commissioning tests, hopefully finish the third week of December. We are hopeful that by the turn of the year this project will be realized and Chama and Lundazi will now be connected to the national grid. We'll be using our own Zesco power because Chama and Lundazi have been depending on the Malawan power which has not been very very stable for our purposes. He also shared that Zesco saved about $34 million after its decision to make changes to the initial contract. The remainder part of the work, excluding the transmission line, to build four substations, two major ones, one in Lundazi and one in Chama, costing 54. We agreed that let us re-engage ourselves and re-cost the project. And at re-costing it, 
we realized the project could be done below $35 million. So we canceled the contract. And then we put our heads together. I think you've seen the engineers are here. They redid it. We appointed the project manager to start work. And now as we sit, we're able to also salvage a lot of equipment which was left lying around all over the country. With that put together, even that costed, we are now sitting somewhere below $20 million. So I do believe that delivery of this project will cost just maybe around about $20 million, saving the colossal $34 million. Meanwhile, Lundazi District Commissioner Marjorie Banda shared what this development means to the people of Lundazi. We are very happy as Lundazi since it, was, since it was a cry of the district to be connected at our national grid. You know, as Lundazi, we've been collecting electricity from Malawi, which was a challenge because people couldn't come bring their businesses on board. We really thank the government of uh, uh, President Hakainde Hichirema to continue with the same spirit that if people cry, he comes on board in time. Abigail Kashweka reporting for Zanis. Still on energy matters, Rural Electrification Authority Rias has signed a memorandum of understanding with Masaiti, Pongwe and Luansha town councils. The move will help the local authorities to partner with RIA in, to connect rural parts of the three districts to the national electricity grid. Details in this report. With over 100 projects being implemented in the country, Rural Electrification Authority is confident that it has performed well in the year 2023. Further, the authority has assured the local authorities and constituencies of timely delivery of projects. We as we are, are committed and we are available and we are ready to uh, work with the various uh, constituencies through the, the local authorities to make sure that these projects are implemented on time, on budget and also to the best quality possible. So what will happen from uh, this signing ceremony is that we uh, hope that the priority list of the areas you want to light up have already been shared with our technocrats. If they have, we will proceed to, to scope the projects, we will proceed to draw up the, the BOQs, we will proceed to visit those particular areas. Meanwhile, Ndola City Mayor has advised would-be beneficiaries of rural electrification to guard the facilities jealously. Public sector infrastructure with electricity provide much more efficiency in services to the people. Ladies and gentlemen, we have to advise that with this partnership between constituencies, government entities, the private sector, to ensure that facilities such as electricity are provided, should be guarded with the much much effort that they desire. Mpongwe Council Secretary is happy that electrification will open up the district to development. And in the past it has been a challenge to foster development, it's especially in key areas when you talk of uh, health facilities. Without electricity it has been a challenge. But we, are, we have all the confidence now, we have all the hope, our hope has been recommended CEO. Wanam Kubwa Constituency Development Committee Chairperson has expressed gratitude. There is nothing more important than seeing a grass thatched house having electricity, which was unheard of. But fortunately, the government has enabled us in the rural to have such privilege. We are very thankful. Over 70 memorandum of understandings have been signed for rural electrification in the country and no constituency without electricity will be left behind. Mary Chola for the news in Indola. And now to Western Province, the Barose Royal Establishment has urged cattle farmers in Alikwanda constituents in Mungu District to ensure that their animals are vaccinated against anthrax. From the district, Darlington Kawambe now reports.
The Barozro establishment has called for stiffer punishment on some cattle farmers who are in the habit of failing to vaccinate their animals against the outbreak of anthrax in the Nalikwanda constituents in the Mongo district of Western Province. Chief Liambang said this during the continued anthrax sensitization by both veterinary and health officials with the support from the Breakthrough Action Zambia. Mula kauka fumani ya kuli ba hana kuto likomzori to pendiwa. Mula kau luka ubiza kwa kuta. Kapeme luka izari poti kumizi kuzisa wakaluwe. Ba beti. Kuli mula kau bangi ba mula kau ba tisabu tata kwa likomuka kuli wana mula kau pendiwi. Likomuzi pendiwa lika fiza ku pendiwa liofula mwana moli fuli likomuzi. Kwa kuli zaha bona kuli zaha kutera utukubo. Mikeni luka kuli. Utata wabu suwana wabu eba kuli bufukafu manea, lutiseli kwa mzalu na na kweo kwa kupendiwa, lituwa pendiwa. Kimu liani wa mahala. And Western Province Veterinary Officer Dr. Stephen Tembo said it is mandatory for everyone to have their animals vaccinated against any prescribed disease in an area. According to the Animal Health Act No. 27 of 2010, it is mandatory, not optional, no? fiscal was held. It is mandatory for everyone to have their animals vaccinated against prescribed diseases in an area. So here, Luambola Zalu Veti, Nji? So it's not by choice, Kakuli Mina Mutiseli Komolami no Kuzota Tuyiwa. But it's mandatory by law. So here, they are breaking the law. By law, those are supposed to be penalized, prosecuted rather, either fined or both. Uh, I would get such people, you identify them, I come with my pokola at 03 or 02, get two or three of those who are notorious and keep them somewhere for 24, 48 hours. When they come back, they will be very good ambassadors. <laughs> they will be the first ones to bring the animals. Yes, because it's the law. We live by laws in this country. Both health and veterinary officers were also at hand to explain the signs and symptoms of anthrax in humans and animals. Kau ni kako uku red red mongati kavimba vimbo kali different na masitombo ena. So i i akakasitombo sometimes kama boya na ma na fever imukau na mwana na first first i na fever mena kumangalati ashita chani ali mwana agona sali active mwana na i. Tole butu kuvo weza raka mau baby rakuli. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. I'm not going to be able to do it. Prevention is better than cure. I'm not going to be Prevention is better and cheaper than cure. Darlington Kabambe reporting from Nalikwanda constituents of Mongo district in Western Province. And finally, uh, the 36-year-old welder of Kawe who lost his left leg when a military weapon exploded on him will be evacuated for surgery at the University Teaching Hospital in Lusaka. Central Province Permanent Secretary Muna Mwanakampwe says Abel Mlendema has since been readmitted at Kabwe Central Hospital for assessment before undergoing the procedure. Details in this report. A few days ago, Abel Mlendema, the 36-year-old welder whose left leg was amputated by a military weapon which exploded on him, made a call for help to procure implants to fix his right leg which was also fractured following the incident. Government has responded. Mr. Mlendema is going back to the hospital. He is likely to understand. Mr. Mlendema, who has since been readmitted to Kawa Central Hospital, will be evacuated to the University Teaching Hospital in Lusaka. Me, uh, an artificial limb will be provided, but that requires evacuation into Lusaka. Uh, government uh, vehicle went to pick him, to bring him to Central Hospital. 
so that he can be assessed for tests whether he's ready for evacuation. He will be evacuated to Lusaka. Central Province Health Director Dr. Elijah Mutokoli has described his condition as stable. If you can see the other leg, it was amputated, so he needed a prosthesis or an artificial leg, something which will help him to walk around. This other one, we expect him to start using it uh, as soon as possible. So we expect him to go back to normal activity. Ben Kampufi Wat Councillor is grateful to government for responding to Mr. Mulendema's call for help. We thank you so much because what we, we are asking for has now come to fruition. Shupekile and Konika Fozanis in Kabwe. That report brings us to the end of the news, but before we go, let's take another look at the top stories. President Hijinema expected in Italy and Germany. Mufurira Council disperses over 7 million kwacha CDF loans. Zesco to connect Lundazi and Chama to the national grid. And farmers age to vaccinate their animals. Thank you so much for watching the news. On behalf of the entire news production crew, my name is Henry Himonde. Remember, we are one Zambia, one nation. Until next time, it's goodbye.